I'm about to start the de fuzzing process, the tarring and feathering. Um, and we're gonna start getting ready for tonight's show at Metro Music Hall with Eureka O'Hara. I'm on a diet. Why aren't you? government name is Sacera Lambo Jorquez, I'm Pulea Paez, and my drag name is Mona Diet. After seeing the movie Powder, uh, I believe five years old, um, I went up to the front of the movie theater and made everybody sit back down, and I asked them to be quiet, and I said, this is the best movie I ever saw. So I've always had that kind of <laughs> performer inside of me. I'm very close to my family. Um, they've stood by me through a lot of difficult times and through um, my first coming out as gay and then my second coming out as queer. Um, we kind of, the first one was kind of like, yeah, the second one was kind of like, what does all this mean? <laughs> as much for me as it was for them, so we kind of discovered all of that together. The gay thing, the like, different thing has always been there. Um, I thought my name was um, the Spanish word for faggot until I was about like six, um, which is maricon. That's what my father would call me. So I just thought that was my name, and it, until I was old enough to understand that it was like derogatory and like not nice, um, that I think that took a toll on me. So um, being raised Mormon, I didn't fully come out until I was in college and away from the full culture, the full onslaught of the culture. Um, I did start going through um, conversion therapy through the Mormon church at 16. Um, but I was able to just opt out and just say, you know what, this isn't for me, which is in everybody's experience. Um, I was never forced to do it. I voluntarily walked in um, and uh, promptly walked out. So I'm lucky. Um, the queer part um, kind of came later. Um, after I left college, I had I was in a really deep place of depression, um, and uh, it was difficult to get a job. So I had a lot of time to myself. Uh, it took a long time to feel comfortable in my skin. Utah is particularly difficult. Um, it's more just the erasure than anything. Um, people view me as male and then um, after that there's nothing else that goes through their mind. Um, when they come out as gay they think, oh okay well that's fine. And then when they come out as queer and it just goes over their head and it's just about uh, I don't know what that means and I'm not going to ask and I don't care to ask so it's like being denied existence um, Cedar City was the venue for a lot of my self-discovery um, the school was not really the greatest um, in the inclusivity. I fought a lot to be seen and to be heard. Um, uh, when I was there, I was one of six out gay people um, for many years. And that was really difficult.
it's like being able to say what I want to say instead of going behind another white cis straight male and saying exactly what they want to say. So I get to really control everything I say on a stage um, with my words and my song choices and uh, my appearance. It's, it's my doing. It's not anybody else's doing. Every weekend me and my friend would go to Atlanta and we would have like a five hour drive and just talk. Um, and one day we were talking about all the things that Mona could be like. I'm on another call. Um, I'm on a break. I'm on a roll. And then um, she said, I'm on a diet. And I was like, that's funny. I like that one. Um, and then it like kind of ties into my um, my um, past with anorexia and with um, eating disorders. And it kind of plays light to them. More than fish. fish. More than fish. Like um, like a like a fish tender. Like a like a beard battered fish fry. <laughs> like I didn't want to look like extremely um, like glammed up. I wanted to look like Susie who lives next door. Um, and then I wanted drama, and I wanted model. And then I wanted mask work. I became obsessed with kabuki masks and um, Commedia dell'arte, so I wore a lot of masks. And then I wanted to do natural beauty, and then I wanted to do clown. Like, <laughs> eyebrows up to here, lips out to here. Um, and then I wanted Instagram-ish, but that was when Instagram just started mind you. <laughs> um, and then I've just been kind of dialing things down to just be more woman next door um, and then back into the mask thing. Listen, we need safe queer spaces. Um, we need safe spaces for queers and not just gay males because the rest of us are out here being murdered and they're sitting back and allowing it to happen so we need those safe spaces we need places where we can go to find love to find conversations to better ourselves to grow as a community um, the biggest thing you can do to support local queens is go to local shows, period. Find out from your gay friends, from your queer friends, where they are, because they will know, and you go. And you go every time. Even if you don't like the show, you come back the next week. Because it, it we, we grow, we get better, everybody, Everybody hones their craft. Um, you just gotta go. If you don't go, you're not supporting. And that's where people are. And bust out your pocketbooks. Write a check. No, write a check, they'll bounce. <laughs> <laughs> ask, ask every queen for their Venmo and tip them. Tip them, because it doesn't pay, especially here in Salt Lake City, it does not pay. So, yeah.